Look at that. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Tuesday already, July 7, 2020. Looks like we don't have enough lighting here, do we? Okay, the gospel today is from St. Matthew, chapter 9, verses 32 to 33. So let's read it. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees, as usual, <laughs> said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. The Pharisees always find something to criticize. Right? They never see anything good. They always find something to criticize. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So as the master of the harvest to set out laborers, for his harvest. There are two basic points I want to bring up in this gospel commentary. The first has to do with the mute devil, and the second has to do with sheep without a shepherd needing a shepherd, needing um, laborers in the harvest of the Lord's vineyard. Okay? These are all uh, images of very important realities in our lives. First, let's tackle the mute devil. So, uh, St. Matthew tells us, a demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. So he's somebody who was possessed by the devil was mute. He was made mute. He was silenced. The devil that possessed him muted him. Caused him to be silent. Okay? Now that's a very, very important, this is a very important gospel that has a very uh, big impact uh, in our lives if we understand what the mute devil is all about and what he does to our souls. Okay? Of course, there's no, it's not like there is a talkative devil and there's a mute devil, right? <laughs> uh, uh, what what uh, the gospel wants us to understand is every devil, every time that we allow the devil to get the better of us, there is a certain degree of muting that happens. Okay? What kind of muting happens? The devil does not want us to speak the truth. That is the muting that happens. The devil wants us to keep the lie that we live in our lives. The devil wants us to keep our sin to ourselves and not to talk about it in confession or not to open up to the people who can help us to cure our sinfulness. Okay? The devil wants us to keep it secret because the more it is secret, the more we keep it to ourselves, the more we keep our sins and our shortcomings to ourselves, uh, the more the devil can, can, can make it uh, worse for us. And the, dev the more we become friends of the devil because we're keeping a secret with the devil. See, that's what secrets between friends is all about, right? Shh, don't tell anybody. It's only between the two of us, right? That is what sin does to our souls. It mutes our ability to tell the truth. It mutes our ability to be sincere and transparent about our real condition and situation in life. Because that's what the devil does. The devil doesn't want us to talk about our sins. The devil doesn't want us to admit 
to our shortcomings and sins. The devil doesn't want us to even recognize our own sins. See? That is why it's really not just muting, it's even blinding. Blinding of the intellect. Blinding of our conscience so that we don't admit the wrong things that we are doing and the sins that we commit. This is the effect of the dumb and uh, mute devil. Okay? The question really to ask ourselves here is, are we allowing ourselves to be muted by the devil? Every time we sin, and we don't go to confession sincerely, or we don't admit it openly when it, we need to, like we told a lie and we uh, try to keep it to ourselves, or we're being asked about the truth about something and we deny it or we lie about it, then we are keeping a secret with the mute devil. And that is not good, to say the least. Right? It's going to damage our soul, it's going to damage uh, everything about our lives. And nobody will trust us. Nobody will trust us. <laughs> and if we don't cure this uh, soon enough, we will carry this mute devil with us until we grow old. And it will be more and more and more difficult as we grow older, it's going to be more and more and more difficult to get rid of this mute devil because we have allowed him to age in our souls. So the sooner we get rid of this mute devil, the better for us. And how are we going to get rid of that mute devil? Huh? By going to confession. Going to confession sincerely. Okay? Making a good, sincere, contrite confession all the time. And also by doing a very good examination of conscience every night. And being sincere in your contrition every night. Okay? And at the same time, always practicing honesty. Always practicing sincerity. These virtues that would help us become more transparent and get rid of that devil in us. Okay? Now, the second point that is part of this gospel has to do with um, uh, 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 the good shepherd. The good shepherd. Jesus took pity on the crowds because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Most of the time, uh, we will read commentaries about this that relate to, well, leaders. Leaders of men whether it be leaders in the church who are the clergy and the priests, okay? Or, uh, you know, the, the clergy leading the sheep, the sheepfold who is, which is the church, okay? How's that? Yeah. So, but I want, I want us to look at this particular uh, passage of the gospel in a different light. And that has to do with vocation. Because our Lord tells us in the last part of this, pray the harvest is uh, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. What does that mean? In other words, the sheep, the people are out there. They are disposed and ready to be led, but there are not enough workers in the vineyard. There are not enough leaders. There are not enough shepherds who can harvest the the, the crop and yield. Uh, 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 make the crop yield, right? There are not enough people who are working in the ministry of God. And he says, ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. But I want, to, I want us to understand this from a different context and the context of vocation. Our Lord is asking us to pray for workers, okay? For workers in the, in the harvest, in the vineyard. I'd like to understand this okay, in a different context, and that is to pray for vocations, which is what our Lord is actually asking us here. Pray for vocations for people in the future who will work in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. Now, who are these that we should pray for? 
really, uh, the first thing you think about is the clergy, right? Priests pray for more vocations to the priesthood or to the religious life. But you know what? This gospel actually applies to all of us. Because it is not only priests and religious who work in the vineyard of Christ. Every parent is also working in the vineyard of Christ. Okay? Because this is a domestic church. The family is a domestic church. And who, who is the leader or the shepherd in the domestic church? It will be the parents. So when we pray for laborers uh, in the harvest, we have to keep in mind not only priests and religious, but also parents who should be leaders of their own households. Okay? And I'd like to include here uh, all of you, because all of you, one way or another, okay, would be working, hopefully, in the vineyard of Christ. Maybe some of you, God is going to call to the priesthood of religious life. Maybe some of you, God's going to call to the marriage uh, vocation, the marital vocation, right? Or maybe some of you will be called to just being uh, single, but still working uh, in, in the vineyard of Christ. So whatever it is that Christ might call you in, whatever vocation it is, I want you to understand that now is a good time to start praying for your own vocation. Okay? Start praying for your own vocation. Start discerning what God might want of your own lives in the future. You don't try to discern a vocation only when uh, you're 20-something years old and you don't know what to do with your life. Hmm. What do I do? I do what I want to do. I want to do. See? <laughs> there are some people who, who go through a process of discernment when they're already old and, uh, and because they have wasted plenty of, of opportunities and time in the past not thinking about what they might want to do in life or what God, rather, might want them to do in life. I want you to understand as early as now eh, that each and every one of you has a vocation to something. Whatever that something is, yes, we don't know that yet now, but it doesn't hurt. And in fact, I would encourage you to pray for that vocation already. See, Our Lady become a, became a mother at 14, 15. She was very young, right? Of course, God prepared her for that role, for that vocation very well, okay? Eh? From the moment of her conception, she was immaculate. So it was like our Lord prepared uh, her for, for accepting her vocation. Right? But we, well, we're not like Our Lady. We, we need to work on it a lot. Right? Uh, and, and therefore, we need to start praying about it. Pray. Pray for that vocation. Ask our Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you and, and already give you uh, uh, whatever grace you might need in order to discern that vocation that God wants for you. Okay? Pray for it as early as now. And then you also pray for the priests and the religious, so that our Lord might send laborers for His harvest, for His vineyard. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Hello, Tito Irwin. <laughs> Tito Irwin's on the call again. Have a good day, everybody. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.